Hey, welcome back to RimWorld Science, where today we're going to have a little bit of a closer look at mortars. Now, as you probably know, there is an explosive mortar, or just a flat-out mortar. There is an incendiary mortar, and there is a EMP mortar. So three different kinds. They all use the same kind of ammo, which are shells, which in older alphas were made just out of steel, but now are made out of steel and chem fuel. Now, the way these things work, each a mortar has a range of a 29 tile radius, but that's like a range that has to shoot outside. It cannot shoot anything kind of within there. At a distance, it can fire out from there. And then each of these different types will fire a different sort of shot. The steel mortar will fire an explosive with a radius. The explosive, if it lands, it will make an explosion with a radius of 4.9 tiles, effectively a five tile radius, as you can see right here. It shows you what it's going to look like. The incendiary launcher makes a square of a 5x5 five five square is its radius. And the uh, steel EMP mortar makes a much larger radius of, I think it's about 9. I didn't measure it right beforehand, but uh, where it has an EMP charge. And then we can check really quick what the different kinds of results are going to be. So let's take a steel mortar here and let's launch it into a pile of... Uh, plasteel stools here and we gotta also have to grab somebody and right click on them to have them uh, actually m do the mortaring okay we saw it hit right here and uh, as you can see, all in the range, there's kind of damage all around. Outside, everything is fine. Now notice, you can see here where it hits in the center there, uh, it lost 100 hit points. And that is actually the same as we go throughout. So one thing that, you know, you might naturally wonder with these things is whether or not the charge is like more explosive towards the center than it is to the outside. And the answer is no. It's, uh, it's a damage of 10 no matter where it goes. Now we should notice that damage, it's not, sorry, I said 10, I meant 100, 100 hit points. It's not a damage of 100 hit points per tile, but per object hit. I mean, see this, if we come and we instead shoot at this pile of ships we have, and there's enough there, it should be pretty much guaranteed to hit at least one of those. Here it comes. Okay, it landed over there. So it landed right about there, and you see this ship, this ship, this ship, and this ship are each down from uh, to 1,100 out of 1,200. So even though it like hit many tiles that the ship was on, the ships only lost 100 points each. Now we can also check the damage for the incendiary mortar. So let's do the same thing. Uh, fire it back here. Should land somewhere in there. All right, right up at the top. And as we go around, we can see uh, all of these are right. Okay, this one's down by 10. This one's down by 12. As we go around, they're going to be down by between 10 and 12 all throughout in here. Now, they're also burning. So if we wait, you'll see they'll kind of go down a little more. So it might be the 10 and 12 is, I mean, like the 12 instead of 10 has something to do with the burning that's happening. But you can tell, like, the range, it's a tenth of the damage done. So incendiary mortars do very little damage. All of their power comes from the fires they create. And of course, in a map like this, where there's very little to burn, you're not going to get a whole lot of use out of the out of the incendiary mortar. But if you've got a siege coming in and they're sitting in a lot of grass, these things can do a lot of damage. Now, the next thing worth looking at is a mortar's accuracy. And it's where things get kind of interesting. Um, it's often noted that mortars are terribly inaccurate. And in fact, there's a sense in which they don't use accuracy at all. The mechanic that mortars use is a forced miss radius mechanic. So they have a forced miss radius of 11, and that's what I've drawn around here. So all inside, uh, the, 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 Flagstone here are outside the circle. Everything inside is in that radius of 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, I'm, with a little bit of guesstimation on my part is how exactly the game is turning this into a circle. And the way that the game works is it picks one of these tiles at random. Each tile has an equal uh, opportunity of getting struck by the fired shell. And whatever you know, one it lands on, that's the epicenter of the explosion. Now... We can look here. I've uh, 
set of four story. I, I've made the kind of gold region in here that's just the size of the explosion. And so if we were to land on the red target, then that the gold is where the explosion would be. But also if you kind of come around like this, you'll see that if we land anywhere inside that gold area, then the explosion will also cover this red square. So it, it works both ways. And this lets us calculate how likely it is if we aim for that target that will hit it. Now, the reason is because they're in this circle here, there are 421 tiles. And inside this gold cir circle here, there are 37 tiles. So there's you know, one, a one in 421 chance for each tile that it'll be hit, then multiply that by the 37 tiles here, you have a 37 in 421 chance, which is just about 9%. So the accuracy on the mortars for hitting a particular spot, uh, like hitting an explosion and having it cover a particular spot is right around 9%. And we can actually test this out a little bit. I did test this out and uh, in two separate trials where I just shot a hundred shells at a center like this. In the first trial, I had about six out of the hundred shells uh, exploded and covered it. In the second trial, it was closer to 10. And in both cases, I think no shells ever actually landed right on that spot, but that's how many landed kind of within this region. Now notice I also have this gray region in here, and that's just because um, all the tiles within this gray region are ones that can get hit no matter where in the circle gets, is landed. But the ones here in this silvery, kind of lighter region throughout, notice how if like in order to land here, there's a bunch of ways you can do it that are inside the force miss radius, but also a bunch of them are outside the force miss radius. And if you're firing at this spot, no shell will ever land outside the force miss radius. So these tiles at the edges should be a little bit less likely to get hit than the center tiles are. Now, often you won't be all that interested in hitting a particular spot, but a larger chunk. So for instance, if you had a crashed ship part right here, you might wonder, like if you aimed at a crashed ship part and it would pick this tile as the spot you were aiming at, you might wonder what are the odds then of hitting that? Well, here you can see the gold here are all of the tiles where um, if it land, any, any shell landing inside that tile will c hit at least part of the ship. So there are, in this case, 96 tiles in this, you know, gold plus green plus red area. So now we have a 96 in 421 chance of hitting this. Uh, that is more like a 22% chance. Now, why do we care about these odds? Well, remember that whenever you fire a mortar, there is a 30 second cooldown. It's 30 seconds on, uh, speed number one until it can fire again. So you might want to know how many mortars do you need in order to be like pretty much guaranteed a direct hit. Now, so in this case, 22% is a little bit more than 20%. So that means if you've got five separate mortars, you should be able to be guaranteed to hit the, the ship chunk on your first try. So let's bring in a ship chunk here. And let's get ourselves uh, five different mortar people ready to go. I'll just spawn another one in. All right, let's set all these to hit the ship bit. And let's see how many volleys it takes. Sure enough, one hit. And those statistics are reasonably reliable. Of course, they're, they're all odds. There's always a chance some of them will hit. But if you want to like be sure to hit on the first try, so you're not kind of sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting with all your people in the kill box waiting for these guys to pop out and kind of rush at you, you know, five is the magic number for crash ship parts. Now, because of that delay, it's often thought the mortars are not very effective for firing at raiders who are coming up to attack you on, on their way in. And, you know, maybe they're useful for firing at raiders who are just wandering for a little bit, especially if your mortars are close to your kill box area. So you, once they start rushing in, you can quickly get your shooters from the mortars to the uh, shooting positions. But the one exception is uh, centipedes. The centipedes are very slow to begin with, and EMP mortars are very, very effective against them. And one thing about the EMP mortars, remember it's got this really huge... 
uh, area. So notice like here in the center, if I'm aiming at that, if that thing is not moving, for instance, there is nowhere, almost nowhere, that this thing can land. If it lands anywhere inside this gray circle here, which is a very big one, uh, it's gonna it's gonna hit hit this guy here. So it's very unlikely. It's more likely that you're gonna hit than not. More than a fifty percent chance there. So I've got here a bunch of centipedes uh, spawned in. All of these guys have explosive mortars aimed at them, and this guy is running an EMP mortar. And let's just kind of watch how this goes down. So notice some of them are stunned. Now these guys are kind of wandering, so it helps, you know, makes it a little bit easier. Now all of them are stunned. Two of them are already downed. Another one. All right, so they had some adaptations. But you can see how this is going to be really effective, even if these guys eventually are going to get unstunned and come and start attacking. Um, like, there they're unstunned and they start attacking. You know, we, we've done a lot of damage to these guys before they kind of get up to the spot where we're going to have to be shooting at them with our guns. Now, the last thing we need to talk about before we leave here is shell storage safety, because shells will catch on fire, and when they are done being on fire, once they get down to low enough, they will explode. And if you have all your shells kind of sitting together like this, and one of them catches on fire, when one of them goes, they all go. So what is a safe way of, of doing it? What's a way to, you know, maybe separate your shells out so you don't lose them all at once? Well, one thing you might think to try is putting them inside of uh, shelves, like granite shelves, nice strong shelves like that. Let's give this a try, see how this is gonna work. So right about there. So those guys catch on fire, we let them burn for a bit, nope. We lose them all. When one of them goes, they all go. So that's no good. So we might try uh, these kind of setups too. So here I've got sandstone because we want, we want something that doesn't burn. Otherwise, whatever happens, it can, you know, the burning will come and, and light them all on fire. And we go ahead and come down to about there. We get these two guys on fire and then we just let it go. So four mortar shells blew up. It did take this wall out. Or sorry, I say four mortar, four stacks of 25, so 100 mortar shells. Still left these totally unharmed. Now I'm wondering, like, does the number matter? Like the fact that it was only four, does it matter? Can we get away with six? And the answer here is... Yes, you can get away with six as well. And of course, when I said six, they're at nine, but now let's try 25 stacks of shells. Will that be able, when those go, will this be able to, to absorb the explosion? Yes, it looks like kind of any explosion you've got, a uh, brick wall will absorb, here, here it was uh, sandstone, the weakest, here it is granite, the strongest, will absorb that explosion and keep the shells next to it safe. So of course, it's up to you, you know, how big or small you want each individual stockpile to be, but the safest way to keep these things from, you know, from an explosion, from cascading and killing all of your shells is to uh, keep them separated like this. And of course, I don't have one here, but put a roof over them as well, because you don't want lightning coming down and striking them either. And in a similar vein, since the mortars themselves can explode when they uh, burn up or when they get too damaged, uh, like this one here, it's also good to have them, if you have them in a row like this, to have some blocks in between that can absorb the force of the explosion. Uh, here we go, and there it goes. And sure enough, the granite takes the hit. Now, if uh, we didn't have those in between, the explosion wouldn't be strong enough to destroy this guy, but it is going to take a lot of his hit points down. Uh, you don't want that. You want to keep these guys safe. Let the granite wall take the hit. But that is all the time that I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, let me know what you want us to look at next in RimWorld Science. I'll see you soon.